Well, a warm welcome to this talk, Friday the 11th of October. Now, this is just a brief follow-up video on what we looked at a few days ago about DNA contamination. That's deoxyribonucleic acid contamination in what is supposed to be RNA vaccines. It's supposed to be ribonucleic acid vaccines, but we find there's a lot of DNA contamination. And this can have really quite significant health implications. Now, I'm going to play you a video in a minute from a leading doctor in Australia and a leading professor in Australia who are very concerned about this. Now, this follows on from what we looked at just a few days ago. Uh, Mr. Russell Broadbent, a member of parliament who has written to the Australian prime minister, this is his concern. In short, there is compelling evidence that excessive synthetic foreign DNA encapsulated in lipid nanoparticles can integrate into human cells, potentially leading to genomic instability, cancers, immune system disruption and adverse hereditary effects. Now, if this is unfounded, if there is no risk at all, then the regulatory agencies can simply stand up and say, look, there's no increased risk of these metabolic diseases there's no increased risk of cancer. There's no, there's no problem. Just carry on taking these RNA vaccines. Uh, but these uh, academics and uh, this doctor in Australia were saying, no, we need an urgent review. They need to be stopped. We know that the DNA is delivered to the cells in the lipid nanoparticles. It can get into the cells. They talk about cancer risk and other diseases. Are these concerns justified? Now, we do plan to do some more talks and interviews on this shortly. But for now, there's enough challenge here for the regulatory agencies and certainly for the Australian Prime Minister who's been directly written to 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 answer these uh, concerns directly and of course if the President of the United States and the British Prime, Prime Minister would also like to answer these concerns we will be delighted to hear from them uh, I'm pessimistic about that so let's listen to the video now and then we'll come back and look a little more about the report that it's based on Welcome again, everybody. I'm here with uh, Dr. Julie Sladden and Professor Ian Brighthope on contamination in the vials of the vaccines uh, that we've written to the Prime Minister on today. Uh, Julie Sladden, what would you like to say to the Prime Minister on this issue, having regard the letter we've sent? Well, firstly, this is a, an issue that came up 12 months ago and has been confirmed in countries around the world like the US, Canada and Germany. And now Australian vials have been confirmed to contain alarming levels of DNA contamination. We need an urgent suspension of all COVID mRNA vaccines pending uh, an urgent and immediate inquiry into the safety of these vaccines. Professor Ian Brighthope, um, thanks for co-signing the letter to the Prime Minister with me. Uh, what well, would you say to the Prime Minister? Well, I say to the Prime Minister, I repeat uh, what uh, Dr Julie Sladden has said, that we need an urgent review. We need to stop uh, the vaccines straight away. The problem with the, uh, this DNA is it's uh, uh, fragmented DNA. Uh, there are very high levels of the DNA, uh, what I would call malignant levels. Um, and the delivered into the cells of our uh, body by a lipid nanoparticle, which actually takes the, this DNA, this foreign synthetic DNA, into the nucleus of our cells, uh, and as a consequence of that, uh, can implant itself inside the, our own DNA and interrupt uh, the functionality of our DNA. Um, there is a carrier, there is a particular part of the uh, DNA called the SV40, uh, and that is known to actually be a cancer promoter. And I, I believe, and I'm sure Dr. Sladden will agree, uh, that there is a, a significant increase in uh, serious cancers. We call them turbo cancers now uh, because they're presenting at stage four, in particular breast cancer and uh, bowel cancer. Um, so we do need to stop these vaccines straight away. We do need to uh, review what's in them, uh, the, the, um, the quality of the vaccines, but more importantly, we do need to actually uh, try and prevent the uh, diseases that the vaccines have been, uh, have been causing. We need all our leaders on side. Uh, Peter Dutton, the former health minister. Uh, have you got a quick, quick note to Peter? Um, a quick note to Peter, yes. Uh, Peter, I've known you since you were... Uh, uh, first entered uh, Parliament, 
you listen to me about uh, the importance of uh, uh, health and health care, proper health care, diet, exercise, lifestyle, and these sort of things. You appreciated that. I know that you uh, uh, admitted um, uh, taking uh, certain uh, uh, supplements to help with your health. I think we need to apply this to the entire population of people. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have a tsunami of chronic uh, and acute serious degenerative disease, including major disorders, heart disease, the cancers, strokes, uh, uh, diabetes, aggravated metabolic syndromes and autoimmune diseases. So, Peter, please uh, heed uh, our words uh, and act as soon as you possibly can uh, and stop uh, the vaccinations using mRNA technology. Thanks, Peter. We will, we will send our letter, a uh, copy of the letter of the Prime Minister to Mr Dutton um, and to the other leaders of major parties or anybody who's interested in them and the Health Minister. So thank you both for co-signing the letter along with many other distinguished um, signatories. So I look forward to a response from the Prime Minister. All the best to both of you. So pretty strong language there. I think you'll agree in that video from uh, Dr. Julie Slatton and Professor Ian Brighthope in Australia. Significant concerns, concerns that are based on recognised um, pharmacodynamics, recognised pathophysiology and, and things that should be answered in my view. Now, this um, is the site here from... Um, this is the site here from uh, Mr Broadbent, Member of Parliament. That's his letter there that you can download to the Australian Prime Minister. That's the letter of the 25th of September. Uh, that, this is the report we're going to look at briefly now that identified this DNA uh, contamination. So let's go in and look at that briefly now. This is the report from Canadian virologist Dr David Speaker. Now, um, I've been talking to uh, Dr. Speaker over the past couple of days and uh, Mr. Broadbent and Dr. Speaker have both agreed to come on the channel and talk to us to give us a lot more detail. Uh, to be quite honest, uh, this report here is, is quite complicated. Don't pretend to understand it all <laughs> by any means. So it'll be good to get a virologist to explain it to us and then we can know a little bit more about what's going on this is in fairly technical language and hopefully we'll be able to transpose that into um more intelligible english for the <laughs> those of us that are less uh, biochemically uh, brilliant <laughs> than dr speaker anyway the background here this this is his report here um background previous work in canada showed that pfizer and moderna covid19 vaccines uh, modified rna vaccines contain residual plasmid dna so these are circular loops of DNA. And of course, the DNA is simply not supposed to be there. Uh, it seems to come from contamination from uh, the bacteria that we use to generate the RNA sequences. Um, when the vaccine virus was tested by fluorimetry, now, and again, I'm going to, hopefully Dr. Speaker will explain this methodology to us in a little more detail. Don't pretend to be an expert on it by any means. Uh, the total DNA levels greatly exceeded regulatory limits by 7 to 145 fold. Regulatory limits were exceeded by 7 to 145 folds in the samples that Dr. Speaker had uh, was supplied with to conduct this uh, analysis. The question is, are the concerns voiced by uh, Dr. Sladden and uh, Professor Brighthope there caused by this uh, contamination or partly caused by this contamination and i think that's an answer we're entitled to from our regulators and politicians but um, the science is becoming more and more convincing that the pfizer uh, covid19 modified rna vaccines also contained sv40 this is a simian virus 40 promoter now this is a sequence of dna and the SV40 is a DNA sequence that sometimes causes tumours in animals. So that's concerning. Uh, we don't want anything that causes tumour in animals. And of course, human beings are animals. Uh, and, but most often persists as a latent infection. Latent means it hangs around for a while. I don't like the sound of that either. So if either of these are true, that merits the immediate suspension of these... Uh, 
genetic vaccine preparations. I would agree completely with the scientists in the video. Uh, now, this DNA contamination was not initially disclosed by the national regulatory agencies, namely the USA, USA FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Did they disclose it? No. Nope. Health Canada, did they disclose it? Nope. In fact, I think they get crosses for this. They didn't disclose it. They didn't disclose it. Uh, European Medicines Agency, uh, let me think. Nope. No, nope, they didn't disclose it either. And the Therapeutic Goods Administration in Australia, TGA, did they disclose it? No, they didn't. Um, really, maybe they should say why they didn't disclose it. Conclusion from Dr. Speaker, uh, despite the extremely high DNA loads, the results were rep re re uh, repeatable, suggesting the results are true and valid. So he seems fairly confident about his results. The total DNA contamination in all Australian vials when tested by uh, this method. So that's the trade name of uh, the fluorometry. Now, don't pretend to know this in detail. He will be explaining it to us in the week. Anyway, this is the assay that he used. Anyway, uh, Farik is a recognised scientist, so I'm sure it's uh, a good methodology. Far exceeded the TGA 10 nanogram DNA dose guidelines, with Moderna having the highest total DNA uh, levels. And uh, there's a good article there about, the, uh, about this as well on uh, Substack, which is also well worth reading. So, um, pretty serious questions for regulators to answer. Uh, and also, let's hope we hear back from the uh, Australian Prime Minister. And uh, it really is hard to see how he can't respond to this. Um, I really think he has to respond to this. And keep an eye on the channel because uh, interviews coming in the next few days from some of these uh, individuals, which should be uh, fascinating and humbling that they've decided to come on and talk to you. Uh, about about this th th through the channel which is brilliant but for now um more to come on this story i'm sure that dna is not supposed to be there it's supposed to be there in much much smaller amounts what is it doing i mean we looked we looked on the last video that the, the problem is the problem is um if we if we have human body cells here so so there, there's the human body cell I, di I did draw this on the last thing but i'll just explain it again if you missed it so there's the human body cells with a the nucleus there, and uh, that's the human body cell. Now, these membranes are, are what we call phospholipid bilayers. So they're basically made up of fatty material. And, of course, the lipid nanoparticle, lipid, of course, uh, they're, they're fatty. So these uh, lipid nanoparticles come into the body. Now, we were told that these lipid nanoparticles only stayed at the site of the injection. We now know that is wrong. These are systemically distributed, they go all around the body. So these can potentially come into contact with cells anywhere in the body, these lipid nanoparticles, but particularly because they're initially in the blood, they're going to come into contact with the, uh, the vascular endothelium, the, the lining of the blood vessels, whether that's through the heart, through the brain, through the liver, through the kidneys, wherever that is. And the, the risk here, what, what, what's happening is these lipid nanoparticles now we know the lipid nanoparticles contain rna so there's rna in here now um in a sense that's what's supposed to be in there because uh there are rna vaccines so that's supposed to be in there although um we now believe there's complicated really big issues with that as well but but ignoring that the the, the design spec says that's supposed to be in there but when, when these uh, lipid nanoparticles come into contact with the cell membrane here, they come into contact, then what happens is, because they're both fats, they just, they just merge in together and become one. So what actually happens here is that this becomes one. So if you imagine that this is the, um, imagine this, this is the cell wall here, there, and the lipid nanoparticle comes along, merges with it, then the lipid nanoparticle can just open up like that, merging into one with this cell membrane like this. Merging into one. And then that lets the RNA into the cell. 
So on this diagram, that would be the RNA going in there into the cell. But now we know there's DNA as well. So the DNA now gets into the cell. So we now get DNA in the cell as well. And uh, what Professor Broad, uh, Brighthope is saying there is that the fear is that this RNA is getting into the DNA in the nucleus of the cell and disrupting the physiology of the DNA. Um, if that is a risk, that, that, is a, that is a concern. So we need definitive answers from the regulatory agencies to assure us that this is impossible. Um, if they have that information, uh, let's hope they'll share it with us in the next few minutes. Uh, but we'll see. So that is the, the problem, the systemic distribution, the merging of the membranes and the DNA and the RNA getting into the cells. And of course, this is foreign RNA, synthetic, with synthetic components. Of course, the DNA just simply shouldn't be there at all. And we know that one of those DNA sequences, the SV40, is, is associated with tumour formation. And uh, we are going to be, we've got plans to talk to other uh, cancer doctors as well who do have uh, concerns. But uh, en enough concerns there to merit official answers from politicians and regulatory agencies as soon as uh, possible. But in the meantime, I would think we should exercise the precautionary principle and first do no harm. Let's wait and see. Given the reluctance to admit things over the past few years, which may have been suboptimal, um, I'm not optimistic we'll get any firm answers soon. Which is sad, sadly the uh, information uh, deficit that we are currently uh, living through. Thank you for watching.